Welcome back to One Hit Wonderland, where we... One screen, guys. Thank you. Where we take a look at bands and artists who are known for only one song. And take it from a guy who knows, there are a few songs that every piano player just knows. Just as sure as your average guitar player needs to learn Smoke on the Water. Uh, Don't Stop Believing is one of them. Uh, Imagine, Imagine, that's a good one. Uh, the really that's obvious it. one is Piano Man. So just for your own sanity, learn that one because you will hear a lot of requests for it. I, I swear one day I'm going to put up a Wayne's World style sign that says absolutely no Piano Man. Anyway, learn it. And um, there's one more that comes to mind. Closing time, open all the doors. Closing time, God's blessing to piano bars across the country. Seriously, a piano bar that doesn't end its set with closing time is like Thanksgiving without the cranberry sauce. But who are the men behind the hit? You can, you can see them over there on the right side of your screen. This band was called Semi-Sonic, a fitting name for a band that was only ever partially heard. And their legacy was one of the most enduring songs of the 90s. Like, who, who doesn't like closing time? It was only a moderate hit in 1998, but its legacy only grows bigger as the years go by. And it drops some timeless wisdom on all of us, like how every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. But Semisonic's beginning was its end, as Closing Time was their one and only chart success, leaving them with a reputation as a relic from that glorious period in the late 90s where songs like Closing Time could get popular. But Closing Time is such a good song, it goes to reason that they probably had more, right? Well, let's find out. Finish your whiskey or beer, everyone. We're about to explore the career of Semisonic, the band that got semi-famous. Some other beginnings end. Yeah. The story of Semisonic starts in Minneapolis, not with them, but with another band, Trip Shakespeare. Hey! Hey, hey, hey. Trip Shakespeare was started in the late 80s by lead singer Matt Wilson and bassist John Munson, and eventually Matt's older brother Dan Wilson joined too. Now, they were big deals in the area, and they wrote songs with names like Toolmaster of Brainerd. Toolmaster of Brainerd! This makes more sense if you come from Minnesota, I imagine. Eventually, the major labels came calling, releasing two of their albums, Are You Shakespeareanced and Lulu. And from all accounts, the label had a lot of faith in Trip Shakespeare. Surely their brand of jangly, upbeat, psychedelic college rock would become the face of alternative music in 1991. Actually, Alternative Rock decided to take things in a bit of a different direction that year, as I'm sure you're aware. After two flop major label albums, Trip Shakespeare called it quits, which is a shame because if they'd stuck it out, they could have been big deals in the 90s jam band scene, because apparently Fish was a pretty big fan. Anyway, the Wilsons went their separate ways and started some separate bands. Matt's was called The Flops, haha. Uh -huh. Bassist John Munson played in it for a while, but he also played in Dan Wilson's band Pleasure. Actually, Wilson, Munson, and their drummer Jacob Schlechter had two simultaneous bands going on playing different styles of music, but uh, the name Pleasure had already been taken, so they just consolidated Pleasure's music into their other band, Semi-Sonic. <laughs> Semi-Sonic released their first album, Great Divide, in 1996. I like it. I'm and you're perfect, and then somebody wants you. Now that's, that's some good vintage 90s rock right there. FNT is the single you want to look out for. Maybe this news can wait. Also, The Prize, that's a good one too. If I Run was released as a single. Uh, none of these songs did anything, obviously. If I Run, by the way, was their set closer, but Wilson says at one point the other guys got sick of finishing each concert with that song, and they wanted to close the set every night with something else. So they needed a new closing song for the set. So we decided to write another song for when it was time to be closing their performance. So when they were closing... It's an easy riff, aspiring piano players. Look, here, here's the notes. Learn it if you haven't already. Closing time, open all the doors and let you out into the world. Closing time was nowhere near the Closing biggest hit of 1998. Like getting jiggy with it, and I don't want to miss a thing, and the boy is mine. Those were your real inescapable smashes, not closing time. But closing time was 
definitely around regardless, and nowadays you'd be really hard pressed to find a song about you which more people know today. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. I know who I want to take me home. And it stuck around because it sticks out. We did not have a song about closing time at the bar before this happened. We did not have a song about last call and loneliness in the bar at the end of the night before closing time. And a unique topic will generally guarantee longevity. But obviously closing time isn't just about trolling for booty at the end of the night. I'd say the metaphor is pretty easy to decode. I distinctly remember having to analyze the lyrics of this once as an English class assignment in the 11th grade. Which makes sense because closing time uses a metaphor that even a bunch of jackass hormonal teenagers like me could figure it out. Obviously, it's about moving forward, the end of one time in your life and the beginning of another. Phases, you know, sunrise, sunset. Which is what makes it such a popular graduation song, if I Will Remember You or Good Riddance Time of Your Life are just too obvious for you. Not that closing time isn't also obvious, except that you don't generally want high schoolers singing about whiskey and beer. Finish your whiskey or beer. Anything's better than that Five and Sea song, though. Among other things closing time is applicable to, Wilson also suggests that it could be about being born, which uh, there, there's definitely logic to that. Time for you to go out to the places you will be from. Also, Wilson had just become a dad around this time, so parenthood, you can add that to the list. It's a very versatile song. I know who I want to take me home. I do find out who he wanted to take him home, though just as long as he got home safely. Remember kids, get a designated driver. This was the breakthrough they had been looking for because they'd always been worried about being a little too pop for the rock stations and too rock for the pop stations. But clearly this was their way in. So what happened? Uh, I haven't said it yet, but there's a reason I chose Semisonic to do an episode on. I, uh, I've actually been a pretty big Semisonic fan for a long, long time. They were one of the first bands I got into when I started to get interested in music, and that's, that's why I wanted to do this episode, because I, I really loved them, and I wanted to share how good they were with the rest of the world, also because it meant I wouldn't have to do much research for this video. But I really do think their other singles deserve more attention. Uh, you might not know this, but they actually did have a second hit uh, in the UK, not here. It was called Secret Smile. I've heard people say that Secret Smile was meant as a euphemism for vagina. Uh, ha, ha, hilarious. Jerks. But it's their forgotten third single that I think was the standout from that album, Singing In My Sleep. That's about the feeling of love declared through a really awesome mixtape. Song that album. Uh, Never You Mind is another one I'd single out, but I actually got into Semisonic from their third album, All About Chemistry. Uh, when this album came out, I had an online friend who swore up and down it was like the best album of the year, and even now he was one of like the smartest and best music writers I ever knew, so I took him at his word and I bought the thing. I, I wouldn't go so far as he did and say it's our generation's answers to pet sounds, but it, it is in fact pretty damn good. For example, the lead single, Chemistry. It's about sex. Much of the album is. This song is basically the night moves for the glasses wearing indie rock set. Except it also reminisces about the virginal days, too. So And then there was also my other favorite song on that album, Get a Grip. Lonely boys and you lonely girls, here at the end of the lonely world. Uh, Get a Grip is about... Get a grip on yourself, you know you should. I got a grip on myself and it feels good. Get a grip on yourself, take my hand. Uh, yeah, 
it is also about masturbation. It's about how good and healthy masturbation is. Lonely girls and your lonely boys Playing alone with your lonely toys I'm sure there was a reason why I was such a fan of this album in high school, but I can't quite figure out what it might be. When the lights come on and the party's through There are always a few with nobody to do Well, now don't despair I know who I want to take me home. But in lieu of that person, there's always a... And that was the last single they ever released, a song about jerking off. Semi-Sonic went on hiatus after All About Chemistry mostly flopped, and 12 years later it doesn't look like they're going to be making a fourth album anytime soon. Wilson found a new beginning after Semi-Sonic and now works behind the scenes as a songwriter and producer. Maybe you've heard of this? Never mind, I'll find someone like you. Yeah, well, Wilson co-wrote it and produced it. And a few other songs in that album. So he's got that going for him. Which is nice. A few years before that, all the Grammys went to the Dixie Chicks' giant middle finger to country music. Yeah, Wilson co-wrote and produced that, too. So that's a few more awards on his shelf. He's got others too, so uh, it's, it's hard to feel bad for the guy, he's doing pretty well. He's working on a solo album, I've heard. John Munson is back working with Matt Wilson and his new band, The Twilight Hours, and uh, the drummer Jacob Slichter wrote a book about what it's like being in a quasi sort of successful rock band. Not as fun as you'd imagine, it turns out. He's a college professor now. So it looks like everybody's doing pretty well for themselves. Yes, 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 and yes. Semisonic's music is very much of its time in that it sounds like 90s rock, so if you don't like 90s alt rock, don't bother. Uh, honestly, I'm not surprised that Semisonic never really quite took off. They're a lot like Fountains of Wayne and uh, The Marvelous Three, two other bands that should have been bigger but were just a little too pop to have more than just marginal success in the rock world, and who had more success behind the scenes than as performers. Semisonic weren't forces of personality like Rivers Cuomo or Billy Joe Armstrong. There was never going to be a huge contingent who were going to say, oh man, Semisonic were my life in high school. This is stuff for a certain brand of record collecting pop nerd like me, and I'm not sure how many of us there are out there. But still, you know, they were a phenomenally talented band, anchored by a superb songwriter, and I, I wish they had more success. I mean, I've heard like a half dozen Lifehouse songs on the radio, and they were all atrocious. We could have given a couple more radio plays for Semisonic, but at least they had closing time. The right song for the right time. I'm Tom the Shadow saying closing time. Gather up your jackets, every new beginning, yada yada yada. Good night. Closing time. Every new beginning comes from some other beginnings and closing time it's time for you to go home to the places you will be from